coming off one of his biggest games in both yards and touchdowns last week. It's the Vikings and the Chargers, and it's all up next on EA Sports. A very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Today, it's week three, and we've got a good one in store, as it'll be the L.A. Chargers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And, Charles, you look at this Vikings ball club. It's been a great start to the season, back-to-back -back wins to begin the campaign. Yeah, you don't want to get too excited. There's still a lot of season to go, but they've come out playing good fundamental football, and that might carry them a long way. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Chargers, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win. have come and gone it's off to week three and we're underway on EA Sports from his end zone here's Darius Davis and he'll be brought down shy of the 20 so the decision to bring it out of the end zone not a good one so here's the Charger offense making their way out and they're led out by their mobile quarterback out of West Virginia. It's Geno Smith. And last week's loss came despite a clean game on his end, throwing the ball with two touchdowns and zero interceptions. His job this week is simple. Do it again. Continue to avoid turnovers and hope that what sunk them last week resolves itself this time around. Man, not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. The numbers for him from a week ago. 17 carries and even 60 yards and a touchdown. It's a pretty mediocre week for him on the ground. Certainly a boon to his offense if he can get a little more output on his touches this week. He should get some more early carries as his team tries to get him into a rhythm. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. And it appears we have a charger shaken up on that last play. Hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Throwing on third down, Smith. And got his man, complete! And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion. We spent a lot of time talking about what's going on on the field. How about off the field with the evaluation? And they spent a lot of time saying, we've got to get a rookie in here who has big playability. And that's exactly what we're seeing here early in his career. Drafted him in the spring. Here he is early in the fall making an impact. Now Gino on first down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. That sack by Tremaine Edmonds. You know, last week it was unbelievable how many times they were in the back row. They had seven sacks. Whatever they had for pregame meal last week, maybe they had it again. I think they're going to continue to repeat it if they keep this up. But remember, we were at their facility, and we walked past the defensive meeting room, and what did it say over the door? Rush the passer. It's a philosophy. It's a statement. That's who they want to be, and they've been very successful with it. An opening drive sack. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And now another one thrown incomplete. One thing that you're going to see from this offense is that they love the matchup with their wide receivers against this secondary. That one wasn't successful, but don't expect them to back away from attacking all game long. On is the punter Scott here as he gets this one away. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And a look at a guy, definitely got a little razzle-dazzle to him. Can do it with his arm or his legs. They're mobile QB. And he's off to a tremendous start here through two weeks of the season. Already nine touchdown passes. Everyone wants to come out and generate a little momentum. He's done that and more, no question about it. And he'll get a few yards here to the 34. These are his numbers from last week's contest. Charles, how do you think he ran the football? I thought he definitely had his moments. I did think that they could have utilized him a little bit better, and I'm definitely going to keep an eye on him to see how they're going to use him this week. Here's second and eight. 
And this is dropped. Oh, boy. A chance for a big play early, but he could not secure it. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. They're going to look to throw. And that is incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it'll be Charger football here as they take over. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? To throw with Smith. He dumps it to Eckler underneath. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Hey, look at this defense for the Vikings. They were quite formidable in the win over the Eagles a week ago. I just considered myself fortunate that I'm not in charge of the offensive line. They give him <laughs> No chance to get away there for Smith as he goes down. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to it. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Here's J.K. Scott now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Fielded at the 43. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And the Vikings will be set up well as they take over in great field position. First and 10. They go play action here on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that. Second down. They'll look to throw here. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, there was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving them exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Third and 19. They'll set up a throw. And pressure coming and they got him once again. It's Khalil Mack that time shooting in there to get him to the ground. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. On first down, it's Smith. A little short pass. This is Everett. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Hey, look at this defense for the Vikings. This crew against the pass, it's been a real struggle. Second from the bottom in the NFL, number 31. And when you're getting ready to face the number one overall offense in the NFL, it does not matter where you rank defensively because you got your hands full. You don't know what you're going to face, but you know that that's a strong unit that you're getting ready for. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. From the gun on third down, Smith. 
Pass taken in by his big tight end. Look at the big man rumble. And he'll finally be taken down at the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A oh, big-time credit. What a play design there. They wanted to get him loose in the open field, and they succeeded. He had all sorts of room to operate in, and they finally track him down inside the five-yard line. Here we go now on first and goal. Eckler. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. And that's a loss of seven on the first down play. He wants about the proverbial deer in the headlights. That's exactly what he was when he got the ball. Went to hit a lane and get upfield, and all he saw, extra defenders bearing down on him. Perfect time to dial up the blitz. An excellent call. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it twice. But I often think this. He finds his receiver, Williams, for a charger touchdown. Mike Williams, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Chargers are on the board first here this afternoon. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And it's now a 7-0 game. A drive that time of six plays. And in the end, it was Mike Williams who capped the drive with a touchdown reception. And he returns this to the 22. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. He was well over 100 yards last week. He told us this week, a little ambitious, that he wants to hit that 200 mark. We'll see. Makes sense, though, doesn't it? Have we ever run into a running back that had a great game the week before that didn't think that's just going to naturally continue, just make sure you feed me the football? And that's what they're all about. Continuity, rhythm, number of carries. Just keep giving it to him. Seven yards there and a first down. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. And yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The Vikings at 2-0 here to begin the season. And they come in feeling pretty good after back-to-back -back victories, CD. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. They started on the ground with Eckler. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Off of play action. Here's Smith. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. 
It'll be a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. Not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Third and long, it's Smith. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. And the defense coming through on third down. A loss of seven to bring up four. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It goes as a loss of six. And now third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere. But it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Possession switching back now to the Chargers. They've got a 7 0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Now, Gino. Looking for Allen, he's got him on the slam. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Smith. And that one's gonna come up a little short. It's incomplete. I think he's gotta be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, He's got second and third down to fall back on. Second and 10, Smith again. And he'll find his man on the out route, that's Allen. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Smith throwing again. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Charger football to start quarter number two, as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. Nifty move. Call it an even 40-yard punt. 7-0 on the return. And it will be Vikings ball first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of scald-out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his love a rest. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. A timeout here for an injured player, and definitely not what this defense wants to see. It's Khalil Mack who's in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. They'll look to throw now on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. 
I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Bell, a nice throw here, right side. He hauls it in. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 28. That one goes for 24 yards. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Jefferson going to go in motion right. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and off the play action, he'll look to throw it. Looking for the end zone, and that is incomplete. They've had multiple opportunities on offense and still haven't scored any points. Felt like they wanted to loosen things up, throw it downfield, and see if maybe they could get a big play and a quick strike. They'll look to throw again. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Credit the sack to Joey Bosa. The Vikings on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This will be third and 19. They'll drop to throw. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And his kick is indeed good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. L.A. set to take over again on offense. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and ten as this new drive starts. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Try to get it to Williams, but it's intercepted. Sauce Gardner puts it on, and he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take one of the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead is now 10-7. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. Remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go-around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. On second down, here's Smith. That's into the hands of Ackler. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. They'll fake it. Now Smith. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Here's second and ten. Again, Smith. 
He's got this to Williams complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 36 yards on the play. He scored their touchdown earlier, and this had a chance to be another. This secondary scrambling for answers, looking at each other, trying to figure out who is going to put the clamps on this guy, because right now, he's absolutely shredding them. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Eckler now between the tackles. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle. And that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL. But if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. I mean, that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point.
Here we go on second and 12. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful to get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there, exactly as you described, an interception. So first and 10 now from the 30. Option play, and they'll give to Eckler. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. the marker following a gain of six. Up the middle with Eckler. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that... He's got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Chargers. Josh Palmer, his second touchdown on the season. And the Chargers are going to take the lead. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated it on the sidelines, right? Perfect route, a good throw in the defense. They had no answer for that right there. Extra point up and good by Dicker, and that makes it a 17-10 score. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. And now out comes Minnesota. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little more momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit. Maybe they're splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Hawkinson exploded after a surprising in-division trade from the Lions to the Vikings in 2022. Averaged six catches a game in his new digs and finished second among NFL tight ends in yards and catches. Could lead the league with a full year in Minnesota. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. 59 yards rushing for him now to this point. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second down and one. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. The Vikings on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This time it's third and three. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. Nothing doing on second and third down after that nine-yard gain on first. Sometimes you get all those big guys down there in one spot, and there's just nowhere to go. And in this case, the defensive tackle used his strength and swallowed him up. And here's Ryan right now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown. And the last time I look and repeat that in Charles's defense, they were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth. <laughs> yes, and he's I miles am. away and smiling. And happy. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down and six. Here's Smith. That's going to be caught. It's Palmer. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 35. A very solid gain of 27. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Throwing again is Smith. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So they had a good drive going, a chance to build on this first-half lead, but now you kind of feel like we got a new ball game. And you wonder what the discussion will be now at halftime because I think we were heading towards one. Now it's a different discussion altogether. One side optimistically, the other side wondering what could have been. Point after, right down the middle. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. And able to get this out to the 25. The Chargers going to take over now late in this first half. And they've got just under 50 seconds, so time enough to try to work their way downfield if they so choose. Fresh off the pick six, it's Smith. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. The sack recorded, it's a loss of five, and now it's second down. The final shot here before break, Smith. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. And this ball recovered by the offense, it here in the final two minutes of the half so this will be blown dead and it'll come back to the spot of the fumble okay Brandon thanks very much time to give you folks at home a look around the NFL on this first official weekend of fall so let's get to it we'll get things started up at the Ford Field in Detroit and that one finds the Falcons out in front Drake London, a touchdown reception. From there, we head down to sunny Miami to check on the Dolphins at home at Hard Rock Stadium. And you can see, currently, they trail in that ball game. Javante Williams, the lone touchdown there as he's cashed one in on the ground. Finally, let's get up to the place they call Titletown, Green Bay, Wisconsin, to see what's happening with the Packers. And for the moment, they trail the visiting Saints in that one. Traquan Smith, two touchdown catches on the afternoon. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. 
Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And we will not see a return to start the half, as this will be a touchback. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? Third and four. He'll look to throw. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's what he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still... With his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. Now we'll look at the Chargers' offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. Now Gino on first down. A little short pass. This is Everett. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. So they'll come up second and seven. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Intended receiver there was Donald Parham. And it's third down. Gino now to throw. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. Well, look, we're watching a quarterback here that's obviously been around for a long time. That's a throw he wishes he had back. He certainly does, but as you well know, this is a guy that's used to taking a few chances, used to fitting it into tight windows. These are throws that he's made before. Didn't happen to get it completed in this case. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. They'll have very good starting field position here as they try to break our tie, and they start first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. They'll rifle this one deep right side. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. A great play there. 30 yards. And the Vikings take the first turnover on defense and convert it into six points. Well, partner, I mean, if anybody was still questioning whether or not he had an NFL caliber arm, I think you can toss that right out the window. That was a heck of a throw right there. I would agree totally. Question it no more. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise, stepped up, trusted he could lay it in there perfectly, and he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings move it away. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, Frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Here's Smith now on second down. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. 
nowadays an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Running on first down, Eckler. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. 16 yards, a little deja vu from the previous play where they got 16. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 47. Throwing now is Geno. And he'll find his man on the out route, that's Allen. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. Back to throw, Smith. Well, this is caught by Williams. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 27-yard line. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. On first and 10, Smith. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Now a second and 10. Now Gino. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. He couldn't get away. He'll wind up losing a dozen yards, a 12-yard loss, and it breaks up third. One thing that I liked about this guy during the draft process was his motor. Of course, I loved his skills, but he plays hard on every down. And that motor on full display there as he gets his first NFL sack. Now a tough spot for Geno Smith and company after the sack. It's third and long. He'll drop to throw. To it. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for L.A. So here are the Vikings to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and ten. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive, and he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. They're gonna look to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have the Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Now a play fake here on first down. He's gonna find his running back, it's complete. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. Second down and six now. Now a handoff running through the middle. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And he will have the Vikings first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. And how about that on third down? So many different directions an offense can go. Throw it out wide to the receivers, get it to their speedy running back. 
they changed up everything and handed it to the fullback, and he surprised them all and picked up a first down. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Two yards to go, second down. They'll send Moss in motion right. And they'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. Try to find a lane, but instead, he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and no more. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, he'll hand this off, and he'll take this down to the 33. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defense in front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Now third down is looming. A pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers' 22-yard line. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. But now he appears to be in some pain. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. From the 20, here's the second and eight. Back to throw here. He's got his tight end over the middle, T.J. Hawkinson. Short completion, just four yards. And now we've got a third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. They'll set up a throw. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. Tight defense there on third down, but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range. No sense forcing anything, and he made sure he did. So a nice kick there as they're able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it, and they do so right there. Taken at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Here's Eckler to begin the drive. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Play action. It's Smith. He finds his target, Allen. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big time completion. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's Charger football, but they trail here as we get going in quarter number four. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Over the dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field. And 
covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Second and ten, Smith again. That's going to be caught. It's Palmer. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 29-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Now a first down throw. It's Smith. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. A really good pickup of 28 yards. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Xander Horvath. His first rushing touchdown on the year. And the Chargers have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. And from the one-yard line, they didn't try and reinvent the wheel, do anything cute. They just gave it to the big back. You almost get the sense that if you can't get it in from the one-yard line with your big guy carrying the football, you'll question yourself the rest of the day. They got it done. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. Taking it about the one. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Throw left side taken in by Jefferson. Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Second down and a yard. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. And he'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the gun, they'll try to run it. Powering forward. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 93 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, you know me, partner. I never tell him to back off of being aggressive. But sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose. And just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you got to go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. The throw left sideline falls incomplete. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football to places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fours. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs. But in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. And you sense the time turning. They scored, then their defense forced the punt, and now a chance to ultimately take the lead here late. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by Harrison Smith, and he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. But I think this one went awry very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. 
Vikings now heading on to the field. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. They'll come out throwing here on first down. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Second and 11. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had an open book beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Out of the gun now on third down. And incomplete on the deep ball. That was for the lead right there. They know they're in a position where fortune favors the Brave. So they took their shot, but couldn't connect. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. L.A. readies for its next possession. And that last turnover could have proven more costly, but their defense only gave up three. But now, answering with a field goal doesn't do them much on this drive. They need to try and find the end zone. The run on first down gets them a couple up to the 27. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. Once more, here's Eckler. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Well, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. Here is third down and four. Gino now to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 38-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a charger first. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. They go back to the ground now with Eckler. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. Throwing now is Geno. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, but it's going to lead to third down. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. A shotgun snap for Smith. Over the middle, and it's caught Keenan Allen. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Off of play action. Here's Smith. Throwing left sideline complete. That's Allen. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. 
and you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. Now a give running left is Eckler, and he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short gain. On second down, Spiller looking for space. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Now Gino. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And we've talked about it, CD, but it bears repeating. And they are struggling to throw the football. All the interceptions and more incompletions. It just doesn't look like things are in sync out there. I would agree with that, and it's not a good day when you feel like an incomplete pass. And now here is another interception. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Vikings are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. And I'm starting to wonder, Charlie, five interceptions. Is that the last that we've seen of him? Well, I think that a lot of people hope that's the last they've seen of him in this game, probably including himself. If this were baseball, the manager would have been at the mound already and asked for the ball, and he'd be in there getting a shower. But in football, you might have to go stand on the sideline and watch the rest of it and see if your backup can do any better. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a game of three. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Chris Rumpf from his outside linebacker spot gets him down there for a loss of four. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So the Chargers now down by six. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go. Plenty of time here. They've got three timeouts and the two-minute warning as they've got it first and ten. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. No chance to get away there for Smith as he goes down. It looks like a loss of right around 11 there on first down to set him back on second. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down the wire. He's got Eckler. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there that brings up fourth. Got to avoid the flags defensively. Here's fourth and long. Desperation time for Smith on fourth down. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. So now let's look at the situation. They do have all three timeouts remaining. So barring a first down, they could conceivably get the ball back. So now it's all about defense and stopping the clock. Don't give up any yardage, right? Use your timeouts. 
and your offense always practices going downfield without timeouts. You know, those two-minute drills, uh, most of them are run in practice without the benefit of timeouts. They want to make it as tough a situation as possible. They're in it right now. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And he will have a Viking first down, and that should be the one that gets him to the finish line. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And strong running there as he's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. Oh, we all just got a heck of a show, Carter. This was a close game for a long time. Close at half, close down the stretch. Home team finds a way to get it done, a narrow victory. Yeah, they finished with a flourish, didn't they? Because there are times where each side looked like they were the better team out there. And the outcome's in doubt for much of this game. Every snap seemingly more important than the previous one. Great effort from the guys visiting. But in the end, how about those guys in their home stadium finding a way to win? So for Minnesota, it's an ideal start as they move to 3-0 now on the young season. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Carolina Panthers. Meanwhile, for Los Angeles, they'll fall to 1-2. And, and they will try to get back in the swing of things next week on the road. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.